Obviously, there's a lot of unanswered questions. What did prosecutors find out to warrant this reversal? What happens to those two brothers accused in the attack? Uh, will we ever have a complete picture of what really happened? CNN National Correspondent Ryan Young has been in the thick of all of this in Chicago. And Ryan, uh, I know I emailed you earlier today before you were on TV for hours saying, wait, what's going on? I mean, so many questions. How did this happen? You just want to throw your hands up at this point. I, I really didn't think that we were going to get to this point and have the superintendent and the mayor on one side and the state's attorney's office on the other side. According to the sources that we talked to, the spokesman for Jesse Smollett, they said they didn't find out until last night that this was going on. And then all of this, all the things that we're talking about, let's not forget that this has been sealed. So there's no way for us to go to the courthouse now and find out what happened here. And I think the one thing that the mayor was hammering in on, something that we have to talk about, is the idea there was a 16-count indictment. That went to a grand jury. So a grand jury sat there, listened to the testimony from these two brothers, the Olsen Darrow brothers, and they thought strongly enough to move forward with those 16 charges. This didn't happen in a vacuum. So from the police side of the investigation, let's just think about this brook. You're talking about January 29th, one of the coldest days in Chicago. In Chicago's history, Jesse Smollett says he went to get a sandwich from Subway. As he's walking the subway, he says on the way back, two men call out his name, said, aren't you that empire actor? They attack him. They, he says, they scream, this is MAGA country. And he described the fact that they were wearing red hats and had masks on their face. And they had little slits here that he could tell was white skin. Then they then put a noose on him, beat him and poured bleach on him. From that point on, people in this city were horrified by this, especially in that section of town. No one could believe all the details here. Police arrived, and when the police arrived, Jesse Smollett indicated to them that they wanted to turn off the body cameras. Then they went to the hospital. And people are forgetting about all the details about what happened at the hospital. You have hospital workers who have been fired because people were looking into Jesse Smollett's uh, health information. So that happened from there. Then those 12 detectives find these two men, the Osendero brothers, they get them to turn at the 47th hour. They had to release them at the 48th hour, but at the 47th hour, they finally broke these two men. They give all these details to the police department. And from there, we saw the superintendent come out strong against Jesse Smollett. He went from being the victim to being someone who was going to be charged. And all along, we've been thinking maybe there'd be a plea deal. Well, this morning, we were told to get to the courthouse as quickly as possible. We arrived. We were exasperated by to see what happened. We were told that Jesse Smollett was there, not there with his large entourage as usual, just like three or four people. And then the idea that this would move forward and he would step to the mics and say, look, I would never do this against my family. The, the lawyer didn't even go after the police department that hard. You have all these questions now. How does this move forward? The one thing that you really want to get your hands on is that sealed document because there apparently is so much more evidence that we haven't been previewed to. You can only imagine what the detectives are thinking at this point in terms of all those man hours that were used and the black guy that was kind of put on the city for a little while about what the next step is. But now you have Jesse Smollett who's walking free. Of course, they gave up that bond and you have all these questions swirling. I would love to talk to the state's attorney's office to try to figure out how we got to this point. What happened overnight? Did the Osendero brothers, do they get charged? Who knows at this point? The twists and turns that is this Jesse Smollett case. You know every single detail. Ryan Young, you have been excellent on all of this. Thank you so much. I've got lawyers and a former police chief standing by to help us uh, understand what's going on. I've got Charles Ramsey, the former Washington, D.C. police chief, also with Philadelphia. Uh, attorney Sarah Azari and Areva Martin. Um, good to have all of you all on. We, we, I, I got questions, too. Ariva, let me just underscore some of Ryan's point. So Smollett, when we saw him today there in the courthouse, he says he has been telling the truth the whole time. Then you have the Chicago mayor and the Chicago police superintendent pointing to that evidence, uh, right? They, re they reminded everyone that a grand jury indicted Smollett on 16 felony counts. So how did the state then get to this? We don't know the answer to that, Brooke, but I can tell you it's been a bad week for lawyers. I am just appalled <laughs> that the state's attorney would dismiss these charges and still seal the record and not come forward and give the American people more information. Nothing in the statement issued by the district attorney's office says that Jesse Smollett did not stage this entire hoax. They never made that statement. What they said was that they evaluated his history and his commitment to doing community service and that that somehow exonerated him or made him less 
you know, accountable for these very serious charges. I'm concerned about the status of hate <coughs> crimes in this country. Hate crimes are real. We know they're on the increase. And to have a, a, a alleged hate crime treated in this way by the police department and the state's attorney, and now to see the police department and the state's attorney going after each other and us, the American people, left with so many questions about what happened in such a serious case. I just, I just can't imagine what the lawyers in that state's attorney's office is, what are they thinking and why are they handling this case in what appears to be the most incompetent way possible. But this evidence, right, that's the key. You want to unlock this evidence. But Sarah, apparently the evidence is sealed shut. So will anyone ever understand what it was the grand jury saw that, that it, you know, it provided those 16 felony counts? Like, we, where's the transparency? You know, Brooke, listen, I think that part of the problem is with the Chicago's uh, police department and also the state attorney's office. They really jumped the gun. They tried their case in the court of public opinion very quickly. They presented a lot of leaks um, as to what they had. And, you know, and then when they sat down with the defense lawyers and saw that there are holes in their case and there potentially there's insufficient evidence to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, and then they may have done the right right thing. I don't think this is celebrity justice. This case is way too high profile for a DA's office to just uh, hand over a gift of exoneration to Jesse Smollett. And let's remember that his bail is forfeited. Uh, it is not exonerated. Usually when an individual is exonerated, so is their bail. So the fact that the bail is forfeited, the money's going back to the city to cover some fraction of the uh, investigation costs, and the fact that he has to do community service tells me that this is some kind of a deal, even though it's not deferred yeah. prosecution. I just think while we may not ever know all the details and the answers like Ariba said, and you know, I think the nation's owed those, those details and answers, but at the end of the day, uh, the prosecutors have to do the right thing. I'd like to give them, I'm a defense attorney, but I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and believe that they looked at the evidence, they didn't feel they could prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, and they thought that this is the best they could do in the interest of justice. Chief, I mean, try as best as you can to put yourselves in the shoes of Superintendent um, Eddie Johnson there, who is, I mean, that, first of all, that news conference some weeks ago was stunning. I mean, he's angry. He's angry uh, because of the, 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 you know, dark mark this has put on his beloved city of Chicago. He's angry because he, he, he knows the evidence. Um, I, I would argue that he would think he did not jump the gun. Uh, and, and he says he found out about all of this when the rest of us did. Yeah, well, listen, first of all, my hat's off to Eddie Johnson because he handled himself a lot better than I would have handled myself under really? the same set of circumstances. This is ridiculous. It stinks. I could not disagree more with your previous guests than I do. I mean, this isn't on the police department. They did an investigation. They presented it to the state's attorney, which, by the way, any charge has to be approved by the state's attorney before it could even move forward if it's a felony. Then they take it to a grand jury who agrees and actually adds additional charges. And if it was a case, as far as this public opinion being tried in the, in the court of public opinion, I mean, this is a high-profile guy. The media is going to grab onto this. He's an vi alleged victim of a hate crime. Uh, there's a noose. There's Made in America hats that these guys were wearing. I mean, why wouldn't the media cover it? That's just the world that we live in now. That has nothing to do with the police department. This case stinks, and somebody needs to take a look at it. You know, everybody wants to talk about police reform, accountability, transparency. You need to look at some of these uh, prosecutors' offices as well. I mean, something is not right with this. And if there was new evidence that came forward, I guarantee you, Eddie and the mayor would not have been as forceful as they were in their press conference. And not only that, why would you seal it? Let it out there. Let us know what it is that's changed. Nothing has changed other than the fact that this guy got to a judge, got to the state's attorney's office somehow, and they worked out some kind of backdoor deal that threw the mayor and the police department under the bus, period. And the ten thousand dollars is bond that was forfeited. Does that cover the cost of a joke. police investigation? That's a joke. That doesn't even come close to covering the cost. That's not one day. You know. I mean, it, 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 come on. I mean, everybody can see through this. At least you should be able to see through it. You just can't justify. Why would you not at least give the superintendent a heads up? Why would you have the court uh, uh, records sealed? I mean, this this stinks. I'm telling you, it stinks. I've seen a lot of bad decisions, or what I believe would be bad decisions before. This one rates right at the top. Something is not right. 
and people need not let this rest because it's screwed up. I'm telling you. Ariva, well, you want to respond just to that? Add, Yeah, I just want to add, you know, I, I'm typically not on TV supporting the police, particularly when they engage in bad conduct. But I, I have to agree with Charles that if, if we're trying to get to transparency here, the last thing you want to do is seal the records. There, there'd be no reason to do that. And if what Sarah said is true, if the defense team presented evidence that made the prosecution's case weak, then come forward and tell us what that evidence is. If there is now insufficient evidence to move forward with that 16-count indictment, then tell that to the American people. 